Good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for uh, the introductions. My name is Dan McQueen, and I'm the Deputy Coordinator of Aquafang. Um, I've been tasked with giving a brief overview of the project uh, and also a brief status update of where we're at. I think this group has fairly good knowledge of what the project's all around, but I will go through the aims and objectives too. So we're obviously aiming for the six commercially most important fishes in European aquaculture to improve our understanding of genome function uh, in this project. And why we're doing that, of course, is to improve our ability to use genetic information to predict commercial traits. Uh, the project has a major focus on disease resistance. We're now 19 months into what was originally planned to be a 48 month project. And I'll comment um, briefly on uh, the impact of the pandemic on the project during this talk. Okay, so I guess this, the start point for the project, which is largely still the situation we find ourselves in, is increasingly we have uh, high quality genome sequences for most aquaculture species, including all the aquafang species. And these, of course, are crucial resources for uh, genetic studies and genetic management. Um, but of course, they're also limited resources. This is the, the DNA blueprint for the animal, but it doesn't necessarily give us all the information on how phenotypes are being formed. So the overall objective of the project is to make a big step forward in actually understanding how genomes are working to um, generate phenotypes. And this requires new types of functional genomic data, which uh, isn't trivial to produce. So the specific objectives of the project here aim to generate both um, significant fundamental scientific impact, but also commercial applied impact. Um, I've listed uh, or I've highlighted by coloring uh, the two main ones of interest to, to this group, but I'll just briefly run through these. Uh, so there's a big aim in this project to standardize the methodologies that we'll be generating for genome functional annotation and to be able to share that data uh, freely uh, and also the expertise to really make a, an upstep in um, functional genomics in European aquaculture. There's a, a goal to be able to annotate uh, the genome of fishes both in healthy individuals and immune activated individuals to really understand the mechanisms behind disease resistance. As mentioned, we want to be able to improve our prediction of disease resistance and also other traits using functional genomic data. Uh, we're, we're quite a unique project in that we're generating standardized data across six different distantly related species, which gives us a real opportunity for using a comparative perspective to understand regions in the genome which are conserved across species in terms of um, phenotypes of interest. Uh, and of course, the reason we're here, we have a major objective in the project to engage end users of the data, stakeholders, and to ensure the results are actually um, converted to aquaculture for um, obvious benefits to all. So briefly then, what, what is genome functional annotation? I think um, this audience is probably fairly um, up on this stuff, uh, but this is about defining regions in the genome which are functional. Um, a lot of the DNA uh, in the genome is not, not functional at all. Uh, the Human ENCODE project really tried to develop a swath of approaches for getting at regions in the genome which uh, do have function. Uh, and this is really a moving beyond where we're at now in fish genomics, which is being able to predict the locations of the, the genes in the genome. Really understand how the genes are being activated or repressed depending on things like the biochemical status of the DNA or the molecules the DNA interacts with. So this is telling us how the exact same DNA blueprint that's present in every single cell in the fish's body is actually being used to generate specific traits, different tissues, different developmental stages, responses to pathogens, for example. Um, so the methods we'll be using will help us define regions in the genome that are responsible for turning genes on, for turning genes off in different contexts. Broadly speaking, we call these regulatory elements. Uh, and these approaches are being uptaken and developed for farmed animals more broadly through the International FANG, Functional Annotation of Animal Genomes Initiative. 
um, and there were three projects that were funded under the same Horizon 2020 call. In addition to Aquafang, there was Gene Switch, which focuses on uh, pigs and chickens, and Bob Reg, which is focused on cattle. And these sister projects had very similar goals and were co cooperating and talking uh, to them quite a lot too. So more broadly speaking, why are why is the approaches important for aquaculture? We know this group knows that uh, genomics is important for genetic management and improvement. What does uh, the additional functional data add? And this has already been, of course, touched on by uh, people on this call. Uh, this is offering us improved approaches to uh, predict phenotypic variation from genetic information, of course. It's a challenge to find causal genetic variants for complex traits using sequence data alone. Using existing, existing methods, we can find regions in the genome associated with traits, but there could be thousands of genetic variants in, in those regions. Um, and actually, most of those are just in linkage with the causal variants. Adding to the difficulty, uh, as Tim mentioned, most uh, causative variants are actually impacting the regulation of uh, the genome, so how genes are being expressed. And these aren't in necessarily obvious locations either within the, the, the DNA. And Aquafang data can help us find needles in the haystack, for example, enhancers that turn on a gene uh, as a defense response to disease, where there might be very genetic variants that affect susceptibility in different animals. So prioritizing functional variants using Aquafang data, applying this to improvements in genomic selection and its efficiency, uh, particularly across distantly related populations. This is a, a major goal of all the three um, Horizon 2020 projects. Uh, and we have a, a work package dedicated to this in Aquafang led by Professor Ross Houston in Edinburgh, and he's gonna speak in a couple of slides time. So I'm not gonna really talk about how the projects organized in any detail, just to say that there are six scientific work packages that are addressing the project specific objectives mentioned earlier, and two non-scientific work packages, too, uh, including the work package seven, dissemination, exploitation, and communication, led by uh, FAB. Um, but work package five is particularly relevant to this, this group of stakeholders, exploiting genome functional annotation to enhance fish breeding, and we will come back to that shortly. Really, what we're doing in this project is generating a huge amount of novel functional genomic data for these different fish species. Um, and without going into detail, these are the, the major methodologies that we're using that will be familiar to some uh, methods to be able to uh, sequence and understand the expression of genes, different types of genes, both that code for proteins, but also other molecules that have functions like small RNAs, microRNAs, for example. Then the newer methodologies that are being developed in the project, ATAC-seq and CHIP-seq, uh, these are quite new tools for farmed fish research and they allow us to identify regulatory regions in the genome, including those controlling gene activity. We're capturing variation across um, a range of different physiological and developmental states, so different tissues in both um, physiologically defined immature and mature fish, which we call body maps, different embryo development landmarks from when the, the genomes first switched on in the early stages of em the embryo through to when all the, the tissues and adult body plan is being formed. And of course, important to understanding disease resistance uh, in different immune activation states. So uh, how the genome is being switched on or repressed uh, as a defense response to, to pathogens, and we call those immunomaps. And there are other types of data and data types that I won't uh, touch on today. Important to say that Aquafang is making the main data sets in the project freely available for use to the broader community. And this is being done through the Ensemble Genome Browser, the, the computational work is being led by EMBL EBI, and I think Peter Harrison's on this call as a representative. So already the six species in Aquafang have reference genomes on Ensemble available for use by anyone, um, but improved versions of these genomes for five of the six species are being coordinated 
or uptake into to ensemble hopefully in early 2021 and all the data generated in the project will be layered on top of those new versions of the genomes. Ensemble then also has really um, powerful tools um, that will be uh, accessible to the project including um, the regulatory build which uses the, the data sets generated in Aquafang to predict where regulatory regions are in the genome as well as where the genes are uh, and also then tools like the variant effect predictor which can take all that information and you can layer on top of it genetic variation which could be from a particular commercial study for example to estimate the effect of particular genetic variants accounting for things like regulatory regions and training will be provided on exploiting the um, swath of information available through Ensemble later in the project that will be open to industry partners too.